Hi everyone, are you worried about the cost of car insurance? To be honest, if you are, you're not alone. It seems to be one of those bills that tends to go up and up and up every single year. What I'm going to try and do today is help people understand how car insurance works and hopefully give you a few pointers on how to save a few quid. The first thing that we're going to have a look at is occupation. Quite simply, your job and the job title that you have has a big impact on car insurance. Just for example, driving instructors are relatively low risk. There's often two sets of eyes, hands and feet operating the car when we're working. So our insurance is reasonable. But there are other jobs which carry high risk. A little bit of advice when you're searching for your car insurance. If your job title has different roles, put in different roles and see how it affects your insurance premium. Just for example, um, I know that a secretary of a company is going to pay less for car insurance than the CEO or managing director. So it's not lying to the insurance, which you can't do, but by all means, try your different job roles and see whether it brings your insurance down. The next thing that we're going to look at is mileage. Quite simply, if you drive more, you're a bigger risk. You're more likely to be involved in accidents. But this isn't something that you can do too much about to try and help save you money. Apart from maybe car share. What if you have got a mate at work that can pick you up one day and then you pick them up the following day? It halves your mileage, therefore cuts down on your risk massively and your car insurance may very well be cheaper. Give it a go. Next we're going to look at your driving history. If you've had accidents in the past you're a higher risk and that also includes non-fault accidents and this is the big thing that people don't get they think I've got priority I've got the right of way and still continue with that crash without doing enough to avoid it but what people don't get is that that then means you are a higher risk to these insurance companies your insurance can go up even if the other party was fully to blame so make sure you do what you can to stop these incidents and situations happening the next thing we're going to look at is age now i'm 44 so i'm sort of like halfway there so my insurance actually isn't too bad nowadays it is more expensive when you're younger and that's because younger drivers statistically have a high risk and i know some people out there might say that older drivers can be a danger well they can however statistically they're a lower risk so more than likely the older you get your insurance is going to go a little lower Another part that we need to put into this category is how long you've been driving. Now, I've been driving 27 years, so my risk is, again, pretty low. But if you've only been driving a number of months and you're young, you're going to be paying a big, big insurance premium. Statistically, young people who haven't been driving very long are more likely to have accidents and crashes. Now, there are ways that you can actually still reduce your insurance premium if you fall into these brackets. And we'll be looking at this a little touch later, and it's quite simply the use of maybe black boxes. Where you live has got a big bearing on insurance rates. 
in main cities like Liverpool, Manchester, Birmingham. If you live in the inner city, they are often the highest risk areas. So you're going to be paying more for insurance. There are other areas a little further out of the city which may have a lower risk. Therefore, your insurance rates are going to be a little lower. Certain areas in the country which are quite remote and even rural may very well have really low insurance rates. The insurance rates actually go off incidents that have happened within the geography of where you live. They also go off any personal injury claims or fraudulent claims. And all this adds up to the risk which is eventually turned onto yourself for your insurance premiums. There's another little point here which we can also add to. Whether your car is parked on the road or whether it's on a path or a driveway can have a big bearing on insurance rates as well. Just for example, if we look across to the right hand side, there's a estate Ford parked up on a path. That's less likely to get sideswiped or mirrors getting whacked or doors getting clipped than these are on the roads. So parking up a path is often a lower risk. I'm not sure how true it is though, but someone told me many years ago that if you have your car in a garage at night, sometimes that risk can be a little higher because you're putting something in the garage because it's worth stealing. Um, I couldn't vouch for that one though. It's uh, someone who told me that many years ago, but if you think about it, on a pathway is going to be lower risk than just parked on the road. The car that you drive has massive bearing, obviously, on insurance. This goes on repair costs. And leading on from that, how many accidents or, in fact, thefts have happened with that specific type of car. The insurance group of the particular vehicle also has a massive bearing on the costs. But one of the biggest and main factors is engine size. If you're looking to insure a car and it's quite expensive, maybe choose the same car but with a smaller engine. How clean your engine is, thankfully, doesn't put up your insurance premium though. The next point is an important one that I'd like people to understand really, really well. Now, it's about having named drivers on your insurance policy. If you think about what we've been saying about risk and a higher risk, if a young lad, my lad for example, who's insuring his car, had me on his policy, I present a lower risk to that insurance company. Therefore, of the time that that car is being driven, it's a lower risk and it can actually reduce insurance premiums. So people often think adding extra people onto your insurance will only put the insurance up. That's not always the case. If it was the other way around, for example, and I was going to insure my lad on my missus's M3, that would be through the roof because he is of higher risk. So it might be something that you have a look at when you're going for your insurance. If you have got people in the family who are going to drive, maybe your car, maybe mum or dad, maybe uh, an uncle or an auntie or an older brother or sister, they may very well, by going on your insurance as a named driver, actually reduce the costs. Try it, give it a go. What we're going to have a look at now is something called voluntary excess. Now, what excess is on an insurance policy, you agree with taking out the policy that you're going to pay the first maybe £250 of any claim that's paid out. Now, 
you can actually agree and you can change this in the selection when you're looking for, for your insurance to pay a higher excess maybe there's a compulsory excess of 250 pounds maybe if you select on top of that a voluntary excess of another 250 pounds it means the first 500 pound of any particular claim that you would have you would not get back but what that actually does by increasing the voluntary excess and the excess that you pay it can actually lower your insurance but don't forget if you were to have an accident you won't get paid out for the full amount might be worth thinking about whilst we're also talking about claims the next thing I'd like to have a little talk about is no claims discount now effectively what this is it's your insurance company rewarding you for having good driving, not making any claims, and they give you an extra discount on your insurance. Now, this is collected in years, so for every year that you don't have a claim, they give you a set amount off, which can vary between insurance companies. But as you collect this so-called no claims discount, if you do have an accident, you can lose it. But there's also another way that you can maybe save yourself money it depends on your situation. You might decide to protect this no claims discount and you do this by paying um, a generally quite a small fee. So if you were to have an accident, you still don't lose this no claims discount. But you might decide it's not worth it. And you decide to say, well, I'm gonna rely on me having um, some good driving skills and I'm, I'm not going to have an accident and therefore it may not be worth it so that's something that you do have to weigh into your insurance price that you pay me personally I've got many years of no claims discount and I do always protect it yeah. so there are a few other factors which we haven't discussed that might actually affect your insurance costs that you pay. The first one's not always possible for people, but paying your insurance in full rather than paying it by the month can save you a lot. The interest rates that insurance companies often charge to allow you to pay monthly are quite astronomical. So there's any other way that you can maybe borrow the money off maybe someone in the family and pay them back with little or no interest. Um, I also understand that that is difficult for people to, to go with. And budgeting for insurance has a lot to do with the affordability of it. Now, there are a couple of other things that might affect insurance and it's especially for young people to be honest the first one that we're going to talk about is black boxes now these black boxes are effectively data collecting units which are um, added to your car and they collect all kinds of information speed um, position um, in other words where you are in in the city or area that you're driving in they collect information on how hard you accelerate and how hard you brake and if you have one of these black boxes fitted to your car it can often reduce insurance premiums quite a lot what do these black boxes do well they they are an aid to safer driving because you get penalised if you break speed limits. Um, they can reduce insurance premiums as well, but there are some downsides to them. These downsides aren't well publicised either. If you do go over the speed limit, but maybe by a few miles an hour, quite often, the insurance companies will fine you for doing so. 
and these fines can be quite a lot for quite minor things a lot of the time and it then doesn't allow you to budget properly for your insurance because you, you actually never know what your monthly cost is going to be. If, for example, a young child runs off the road in front of you and you have to brake really heavily, there's a strong possibility that if you have one of these black boxes fitted, you're going to get charged for saving a child's life. Now, for me, I get the idea of these black boxes, but they haven't been regulated and used to their full potential yet. But I also understand that it's often the only way that younger drivers can get insured on their first vehicle. But in my personal experience with people that I know very well, um, they've even been fined for going maybe two or three minutes over their curfew if they've been held back in work and they have a curfew on some of these black boxes. You're not allowed to drive past 11 o'clock at night because supposedly that's where risk increases but I've got first-hand experience that if you're coming at five past 11 you might get a 20 pound fine on your insurance and for me that's ridiculous. What would I rather people do? Honestly I'd rather people take the time, drive safely and properly and be a few minutes late rather than trying to rush, trying to get there before the curfew then end up having an accident. So these black boxes can be the only way that people can get insurance but just be careful of them because there are downsides to them like I said that aren't well publicized. Just going on from the black boxes as well they use a, a GPS signal to, to collect all this data. You can also have something installed on your car called a tracker and we've got one on my missus's car quite simply what they do and um, they're a security device which you must have um, a fob on you to start and move the car and if you don't have this fob and you just start it um, alarm bells go off at the uh, monitoring station and we get a call to see whether you know we've we've actually done this by mistake or whether the car's been taken and what these tracker systems also allow um, the, the the security providers to do is track when the car has been stolen and it aids in recovery now the black boxes also have this function so that's another benefit that I forgot to mention about the black boxes but the trackers are a really good way of making your car a little bit safer sorry I had to just uh, shut up there for a second Again, safety is always the key. If I feel as though I cannot talk, I'm not talking directly to the camera, but if I feel as though I cannot talk and I need to concentrate on things, that's why I shut up because of the ambulance there. And like I said, take that into your drive and everyone as well. One last little thing that I've just thought about that, that might be a benefit as well is the Pass Plus scheme. You may have heard of the Pass Plus scheme where you do um, a minimum of six hours further tuition with your registered driving instructor and then on completion of this Pass Plus scheme um, certain insurers then offer you a discount on your yearly insurance. Um, is the Pass Plus worth it for insurance nowadays? Honestly very rarely tend to find that bigger insurance discounts can be gained by maybe running the black box. So the Pass Plus scheme is really irrelevant a lot of the time nowadays. I think I've done probably two or three in the last five years and that shows you um, how often people are taking them up. The course itself is beneficial because it gives you greater experience but again, 
over the last little bit of time where fully qualified driving instructors are now allowed to teach learners on the motorway the pass plus has become even more irrelevant because that was the main thing that people hadn't done in the pass plus scheme that then was only able to be done once they'd passed but nowadays we're able to do it throughout so think about the added training of the pass plus but it necessarily doesn't necessarily guarantee you're going to get any cheaper car insurance um, funny little story a number of years ago i was uh, phoning up for car insurance for my missus's car and the insurer asked me whether i'd completed the pass plus and i said no i haven't but i'm qualified to teach it do i still get the discount and the answer was no which makes a whole mockery of the whole situation but get that at further experience if you can go and do some further training because remember the better you are it reduces risk and over the long run that's lower insurance premiums for you i hope that's helped everyone to be honest if you do save anything from the little tips that i've shown you on this video please let us know in the comments it'll be interesting to see what people can save as always thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you all soon